Hello, good afternoon, Sunday, 1 p.m. British Overcast time, that's BST if you're uh, outside of the UK. And um, we are very thrilled here today at the Summerfest Online, VegFest UK Summerfest Online uh, 2020, our inaugural uh, online festival, right in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, we are uh, running a series of webinars, we've got live streams, we've got some fantastic presentations, some awesome exhibitors, and um, please, after this session, do feel free to go and have a browse of the exhibitors. Um, they've got some great products, they've also got some great special offers. Um, there's some presentations available, so if you're interested in the cookery demos, there's a series of eight or nine presentations up on the site. This one is being recorded and it will be available uh, afterwards. Um, the recordings are all available for 30 days. So that's probably up around about September 15th. They'll be available on the website here to view. Um, so if you've enjoyed the, uh, the, the webinar, you wanna come back perhaps, um, then you'll be able to come back and view it or bring your friends. Um, so we're absolutely thrilled to welcome today uh, Vegan Chef Day. Vegan Chef Day Radley is going to be um, able to take us through on a live stream. I know that Day has been doing a number of daily live streams throughout lockdown. So we're very fortunate to have, I think Day Radley, you've done something like over 100 live demonstrations, am I right, in the lockdown period? Anyway, yeah. here we go. this is Day Radley with her cookery demonstration. Hello everybody. Hi, there you are. There you are. Um, yeah, so, uh, so far we have done 117. So, <laughs> a lot, quite a lot of them. And we even celebrated our 101st as well, where we all made brownies um, and celebrated them with rainbows and, you know, beautiful things like that. So, and it's given us like a really, really great opportunity to build this amazing community um, as well. And as Tim knows, I'm sure, community is key when it comes to veganism it really really helps massively um so today i'm going to be showing you how to make these really really epic uh, vegan burgers and the reason why i came up with this recipe was because so many vegan burgers are they're just a bit squidgy um, or a bit pasty and you put it inside a burger bun and then you go to take a bite of it and it kind of squishes out the sides um, or you try and fry it and it falls apart when you're trying to fry it and so they definitely aren't good for barbecues um, and as lots of you will know um, going to a barbecue as a vegan and having your own little you know side barbecue thing um, is a really really great way to show other people how great vegan food can be but if you're going to go there and you're going to show them this kind of like mushy bean burger that falls apart like that is just not going to cut it at all it's just not going to cut it um so I decided to recipe develop a burger that would really, really hold together, that had a great texture, you know, wasn't pasty at all, and had that meaty umami taste. Um, so we've got all of our ingredients here today. Um, so really simple things, you know, simple ingredients you can get from a supermarket, um, and also ingredients that aren't too expensive as well. Okay, so we're going to start off uh, by chopping our onions. Um, and also our garlic and our mushrooms, but we don't have to cut them into tiny pieces. And I know that you guys are going to um, try to like, practice your chef skills and try to make these onions really, really fine chop. Don't worry about it. Like you don't have to go to that effort. So just save yourselves the hassle. We're gonna chop them into bigger pieces. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're gonna be blending it. So save ourselves some time and just chop them into, um, into bigger chunks. Um, but while we're doing that, I'm just going to pop on our frying pan on a low heat. And then that's just going to speed things up as well. So let's start by chopping our, our onions. And I'll show you how big we chop them. There we go. So that's it. So, you know, it's much quicker, much easier than trying to finely, finely chop anything. Okay, I'm 
and we'll pop the heat up a little bit. There we go. So we just need to chop them into a few pieces, a few chunks, and that's it. So we can pop that to the, to one side. And you guys can use um, any type of onion, shallot, um, red onions if you want to. Um, even leek, even leek will be absolutely fine. We just need something that has that oniony flavour. Um, so now our pan is getting a bit warm, so we can add some oil to it. So you can use any type of oil, sunflower or rapeseed oil. Um, I tend not to use vegetable oil because vegetable oil can contain palm oil. And so we all know about about the effects of palm oil. So, you know, if you're gonna go for something like a neutral tasting oil, I always go for a sunflower oil or a rapeseed oil. Um, you could also use like a light olive oil um, if you want to, or even, you know, just an olive oil. The flavor would be, would be nice with this anyway. So, and of course you can do the no oil method. So there is a method of frying without any oil whatsoever and you just need to add drops of water. The flavor won't be as intense if you do that but that is an option for those of you who don't want to eat refined oil so now we can just pop these into the pan and when we're frying we want to hear that sizzle when it goes in okay that's that's good because it means that um you know the oil is hot enough and it's not just going to make our onions greasy it's going to fry them it's going to sear them and that's what we want Okay, so whilst that is cooking, I can roughly chop uh, our garlic. So I say 20 grams of garlic, and for me that's three. And these, these are quite large cloves as well. So in the recipe, in the ingredients list, we have put, you know, 200 grams of onions, 20 grams of garlic, because there's no point in me saying, um, you know, one onion, Two onions because it depends how big your onions are and it depends how big your garlic is so it's good to be this specific especially in this burger recipe because our onion and garlic are really really important in giving lots of flavor lots of depth of flavor to this so as you can see i'm just roughly chopping them so we can just pop these to one side because we want our onions to fry for a bit longer you know if we put our onions and garlic in at the same time then what's going to happen is the garlic is going to burn garlic is really natural um has, has a natural sugar in it which is why it's so sticky um, but that does mean that it tends to caramelize um and after caramelizing uh it can then quite easily burn so whenever i'm cooking onions and garlic together which quite often we do you know it's in so many recipes Cook the onions uh, for a few minutes, um, get them to start browning, and then I'll pop um, our garlic in. So now onto our mushrooms. Um, and again, you know, we've got the weight there for you um, because you don't know how big your mushrooms are gonna be, they come in all shapes and sizes. And in this recipe, you can actually use whatever mushrooms you have. Um, we've tried this recipe with lots of different types of mushrooms and all mushrooms go really, really well in this. Um, I find that I really, really like these chestnut mushrooms, the brown mushrooms. I find that they've got more flavour than the white button mushrooms. But to be honest, we're putting in so much other flavour into this dish that using white button mushrooms would be absolutely fine. Of course, they can be the cheaper mushrooms as well. Uh, now, there is one other thing that we can do with our mushrooms which is we can actually leave them out in the sunshine and they'll absorb vitamin D, which will then go into our body. So if you feel like maximizing the nutrition in this recipe, then just give them a sunbathe and, and then you can eat them. Um, so once again, we'll just roughly, roughly chop our mushrooms. So into you know, chunks like this, So we're not being fancy about it at all. These are all going to be blended. So 
they can just be really rough. You just want to make sure that they are roughly the same size. That's it. Okay, and now these can go in with the onions. So we'll give that a stir. And whenever I'm frying anything, um, I always give it a mix right at the start, just to spread that oil around a bit. Because we don't want the oil just sitting on the bottom and just cooking the things that are touching the oil. We want that oil to mix in with the veg properly. Otherwise, some of them will be a bit dry. There we go. We don't have to add any more oil to this. If the pan dries out, you can add tiny splashes of water. Tiny splashes of water. And that's a really, really good trick to limit the amount of oil that we're using in food. So we can start off by, we can start off the frying process with a little bit of oil, uh, just to get the heat really, really hot. You know, oil um, conducts heat uh, very, very well. Um, and that's why, that's why we use it for frying. And also it can help some of those flavors develop. It can help caramelization as well. Um, but if you do want to limit the amount of oil that's going to your food, then just add splashes of water, but only splashes of water. We don't want to drown it, especially because we've got mushrooms in here. Mushrooms soak up any type of liquid, which is why they're great at dealing with marinades, like just like tofu is. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're not putting too much water in there if you do need to put water into a frying pan. So what we're looking for here, is we want our we want our mushrooms to start browning. Okay, that's what we're that's what we're looking for. As you can see, they're still quite chunky, which is absolutely fine, absolutely fine. And it's on quite a high heat because we don't want our mushrooms to start letting go of the water. Um, mushrooms are absolutely amazing. Um, they are seventy percent water. Would you believe? It's quite hard to believe that because they seem like quite a dry um, ingredient, but they're 70% water. And so if we cook them in the wrong way, they can release a lot of that water and then they can just start cooking in their own water and then they can become like slugs, which is usually the reason why people don't like mushrooms. Um, and by the way, if there are any mushroom haters out there, and I know that there's gonna be lots of them, this recipe does not taste of mushrooms and I, I absolutely promise you 100% that that is true, it's not a trick at all. Um, but I have fed these burgers to many people um, and I always ask who hates mushrooms beforehand and afterwards I ask them um, how, how it tastes and without fail each of them have said that it doesn't taste, mushroom, it doesn't taste of mushrooms at all, it doesn't taste of mushrooms. So um, on our live shows, we have a lovely lady called Colleen uh, who hates mushrooms and she will definitely be able to think that it doesn't, it doesn't taste of mushrooms at all. So, you know, if you're one of those people who hates mushrooms but you know how healthy they are, then great recipe for you. Really, really great recipe for you. Okay, so this is nearly, nearly done. And you can see you know, that these mushrooms are browning and that's what we want because it's just going to add more flavour. It's just going to add more flavour to, to our burgers and that's what this is all about is imparting a really 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 good flavour. Okay so now we can take this off the half and pop the mixture into our bowl. So, but you need to keep hold of your frying pan because we will need it again. So we'll just pop this to one side. Now, this is going to form the base of our, of our burgers, but we need to impart more flavour in it. So now we're going to use 
um, some yeast extract, which is also known as Marmite or Vegemite. Uh, but you can actually buy this really, really great um, yeast extract from Meridian, which is gluten free as well. So if that's an issue for you, by the way, all of our um, recipes are gluten free at school. Um, so this one is a really, really good product. Uh, but of course, you know, there's lots of different yeast extracts out there. You can also find them uh, made by supermarkets now as well, which makes it you know, really, really cheap and accessible. But if you can't find this, and if there are people uh, tuning in from America, I know it's really, really difficult to find yeast extract in America. So the options are, is that you could use a brown rice miso. Um, so basically what this ingredient is doing is it is adding umami, uh, which is the magical taste. And it's also that taste that people say people miss when they go vegan. And if you don't have that taste in your diet, if you miss it, then there is a chance that you may stop being vegan. So it's a great thing for us to include in food because it balances the flavors out. If we have a lot of vegetables in our food, which by default, vegan food is high in vegetables, they're on the sweet side, they contain natural sugars. So we do need something to balance that out and these savoury pastes are great for that. Um, so we've got brown rice miso here, that's an option, and we're only going to be adding a little bit, so this isn't going to make the burgers taste like miso burgers, so don't worry about that, but you do need to use brown rice miso, not white miso. So white miso is sweet and brown miso is salty, and that's what we need. The other option, which is my favorite option, is uh, this product, which is fava bean umami paste uh, by a company called Hogma Dogs. So Hogma Dogs are a UK brand and they grow, they grow peas and beans and quinoa and chickpeas and all of this type of amazing uh, products. Um, and so if you're in the UK and you buy from them, of course, you know, these ingredients haven't had to fly anywhere, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I think that these days they're also even making things like their own sourdough bread. Uh, but this fava bean umami paste is just fava beans that have been fermented. That's it. So there's no other ingredients going on in there. Um, there's no salt even, you know, it's just um, fermented fava beans. That's it. And of course we know that uh, fermented products are really, really good for our tummies. So it's a great way to sneak it into our diet. Um, so now we can pop between one to two teaspoons of this in there. So you do have to factor in how salty your um, one of these products is because they can differ, they can differ. So even if you just use yeast extract, there is some that is very, very salty. There is some that is reduced salt, so it's not so salty. So my advice to you is to start with one teaspoon, uh, make the mixture up, taste it, and then see how it is and see if you want to add more because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Um, so I know that with the, the savory um, ingredient that I'm using, I can actually uh, just pop in two, two teaspoons of this. So I'll pop my two teaspoons into there. There we go. And then our stock powder. So this is the stock powder that I like to use and quite a few of you will probably recognize the brand because it's Marigold. Um, and they make a lot of really, really great vegan products. Um, I like using the stock powder because I really hate those little cubes of stock because you would end up like using half one and then trying to crumple the foil packet back together again. And you'd end up with lots of like half packets of um, of stock cubes in your cupboard and I, I can't I can't be done with that or there's the gooey uh, cubes that you have nowadays that you put it into a sauce or a stew and you try and mix it in and it just it just doesn't evaporate at all whereas with this powder because it's powder because you get a tub of it we don't have any of those problems at all um, and it's just really really easy really easy um, so we need four teaspoons of this um, and we don't really need any salt. So salt is optional, uh, but we've already got a stock powder that has salt in it. And of course we have one of these products, which is salty, um, and that's its role. Uh, but if you taste it and you think that it needs more salt in it, then, you know, uh, then you're welcome to put more in. Okay, so now we can blend this. So 
Um, we, are, we do have a couple of other ingredients to put in. These are dry ingredients, but it's much better for our blender if we can blend all of this while it's still wet. Okay, that's going to be so much easier for our blender to deal with. And we want to be kind to our blender. Um, and if you are kind to your blender, then you can get away with using quite a cheap blender. So this one was 24 quid and it comes with a chopper attachment um, that can do things like you know, chopping nuts or chopping herbs or even chopping onions for, for you, uh, which is great. And so I always recommend that people get one that has the chopper attachment on it. And also you get one that is at least 500 watt. So if it's under 500 watt, then you're going to try to grind nuts and you're going to find that, uh, that the motor will eventually burn out. Um, and so, you know, I learned that after going through a lot of these. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind, but you can get them fairly cheaply. And to be honest, I haven't found any difference in quality between um, a blender that is 24 quid and one that is 50 quid. Okay, it's more about the wattage. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, get this blended. And if we can bring you guys in for a close up and then you can see what I'm doing, but it's not gonna be a very pleasant noise. So apologies for that. So I'm just making sure that any bits of uh, onion that I can see in there are blended. Okay, and that's it. So with this, um, as it stands, we want to taste it now. So, you know, you want this to be very, very salty because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding um, some ground flour and some porridge oats. Both gluten-free, by the way, so this is a complete gluten-free recipe. Uh, but these are what I would call blank flavours. So they don't have any flavour of their own. Um, they're just going to be helping with the texture of it. But because they don't have any flavour of their own, we need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of flavour in here. So, you know, if you taste it and it is very flavoursome, then that is perfect. That is absolutely what we're going for. Okay, so now we can add these two into our bowl. So, by the way, with the gram flour, you could use any type of pea or bean flour. That's absolutely fine. And depending on if your mushrooms have let some water out, this might be a bit more sloppy. But what you can do is you can just leave it to rest for a while and it should thicken up because ground flour has really, really great thickening properties. So if you mix ground flour with anything wet, so say for example you make pancakes, you know, if you let it sit there for a while, it will, it will thicken. Okay, so now what you could do is you could just leave it to rest for a while until it's a bit cooler because at the moment it's quite hot and I don't necessarily want to handle it. But as you guys are here, uh, we're in a bit of a rush today. So what we can do is we can get a plate and we can give this more surface area. So that is my preferred method for cooling down anything in the kitchen is to give it more surface area. And even just by putting it into a different bowl, that's going to help because the new bowl is cold or at least cool. There we go. Okay. So we're going to leave that to just rest for a few minutes. And then we'll get our frying pan back. 
Okay. And so whilst we're waiting for this um, to cool down a bit, I can uh, take this opportunity to tell you about what it is that I do um, and how you guys can see more of our recipe videos and also our recipes. Um, so I am founder of the Vegan Chef School and I set that up 2018 for World Vegan Day. Um, so we train people how to become professional vegan chefs. We get them internships. Um, we get them to the point where they feel confident enough to walk into a professional kitchen. Um, so to date, I think we have uh, we have trained almost 80 people to become professional vegan chefs, which is amazing. Um, and now we host lots of um, free live recipes on every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on our page, on our Facebook page, which is the Vegan Chef School. And there is a huge, a huge back catalogue of our recipe videos as well. Um, so as uh, Tim mentioned, and I was talking to him about that at the start of the show, um, when lockdown happened, in fact, it was just before lockdown happened and we knew that we had to take a break with the school, with the in-person classes, um, we decided that, you know, we've got all this knowledge and we love teaching, um, so, you know, what can we do with it? So we started hosting uh, live recipes every day at midday. Um, we're now on 117 or 118, I don't know, you kind of lose count after like 40 of them. Um, and we've got a really, really amazing community that come to all of our lives and cook along with us. Um, so we release all of the information on the recipes um, days beforehand so that people have the opportunity to go to the shops and get what they need and we tell you what equipment you need as well. Um, so people actually cook along with us live and that gives people the opportunity to ask questions as well. Because you know sometimes like, you're making something and you'll think like well this doesn't look like what's on the screen and you want to ask you know you want to ask oh it's too wet it's too dry what should I add um, you know did I miss a bit Whatever it is, you know, all those questions that you want to ask when you're watching a cooking program, you get to ask us. Um, and it's a really, really good way of motivating people to make new recipes each week. Um, so, um, yeah, so if you guys are interested, then check it out. It's the Vegan Chef School everywhere <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else um, and the website as well. So we've got a lot of the recipe videos on our website, too, so you can check that out. And you know, loads of free content there for you guys just to become like better vegan chefs in your own home. Okay, so I think that this is about done. Or at least it's at the point where I can handle it. Um, so we're gonna pop our pan back on. Um, and we just needed a small amount of oil. This, there we go. But you know, this is the type of recipe that you could do in stages. You could really, really easily do this in stages. So you could get um, to this point and just pop, pop this into the fridge. And then, you know, if you're if you wanted to make them the next day, then you absolutely can. You absolutely can. And also, it's a really, really great recipe for batch cooking. And batch cooking is something that I always encourage people to do if they feel like they don't have um much time on their hands to be able to cook because you know the weekend on your days off you can basically just cook yourself a meal but cook you know two or three times the amount and then freeze what you don't eat um, so these burgers are great just to be popped into your freezer um, and when it comes time to you know make that evening meal when you're really tired from work you can literally just get one out of the freezer and pop it in the oven just like you would do with one of the one of the ready-made burgers. Um, so you know it makes life a lot easier, but it also means that you're eating food that is made from scratch, which is always always healthier than than um, than the ready-made version. Okay, so we want this to be nice and hot, and I'm just making sure that my oil is all over my pan. I don't want it to be sticking. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mold them. And as we mold them, we're going to put them straight into the pan. Okay, so we're not going to mold them and then put them on a plate, you know, where you have all of them together and then put them in the pan. Because one, you're going to have more washing up to do. But more importantly, uh, although the non washing up thing is quite important. More importantly, <laughs> um, 
they can be a bit of a fab to, you know, because they're, they're still a bit soft. They are still a bit soft. And if you make this, you're probably going to get to this stage and go, I thought she said that they were firm. These aren't firm. Trust me, they will firm up. Okay, right. So let's get a bit of our burger, make them into a nice round like this, and straight away pop it in. Okay, into a round, and you'll see, you can see like my, how my hands are working. I'm not squishing it down when I'm rolling it around. My hands are quite loose, and then I pat it down, and then, there we go. So we just want to sear the outside, and then we're going to pop them in the oven. The reason why we're doing both is because we're using gram flour. Uh, gram flour, when it's in its raw state, Tastes absolutely vile, really, really disgusting, but it's a really great flour to use. We use it in a lot of our recipes at school because it's cheap, it's accessible, and it's gluten-free. There we go, let's just see if we can shift one of these over. space in the pan. But as you can see it gets it gets messy. It does get messy. And there we go. So I'll just quickly rinse my hands. And as you can see, with my nonstick pan, I am using my wooden spatula. And so that's just so that I don't scratch my pan. So we want to make sure that those undersides are a little bit more cooked before we flip them over. So with this, with this part of the recipe, we are just browning them. That's what we need to do with this part of the recipe. Because they will have this really lovely colour that looks like a burger, basically. You know, this really lovely dark brown. That's what we're looking for. So we do need to set our oven to 200 degrees, which is 390 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark six. So once these are nice and browned, we can pop them onto, straight onto a baking tray, and then they can go into the oven. And they go in the oven for around, around 15 minutes, but it really depends on how big your burgers are. Because of course, if they're a bit bigger, they're going to need a bit more cooking time. Um, and I actually have made these burgers as mini burgers as well, which is really, really, really cute uh, and really great for, for you know like a party or something like that. You know, you can make these burgers small, use a toothpick, and put something like you know a sun-dried tomato on top and a leaf of basil, and then it makes a really, really nice canapé. Because these burgers are nice, uh, warm or room temperature. You know, so you can have them as either. Okay, so let's see how. They're doing. There we go. Okay, so now these can go into the oven. Okay. And if you want to make them neater, uh, you can roll the dough out between two sheets of baking paper and use a cookie cutter. 
um, to cut out perfect circles if you want to. Okay, so these would now go into the oven, um, but as if by magic, here's one I made earlier. So at this point, we can, of course, eat them. Uh, alternatively, um, you know, if you're batch cooking, we can just pop them into the freezer like this. Um, I would say, you know, if you're gonna, if you want to freeze them, then uh, first of all, freeze them when they're not stacked together, and then once they're frozen, you can stack them together, and then they're not gonna stick together. Um, so yes, you can do that, and also they'll be fine in the fridge uh, for a few days as well. Now, to take these to the next level, um, we're gonna put them on a griddle pan. Um, and that's because we, I want to show you guys how to um, create those really, really lovely stripes on our burgers that just make them perfect, I think. I think they make them perfect. Um, but at this point, you can also put them on your barbecue. And as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, you know, they're pretty firm. They are pretty firm. Let me open, open one up so you can see the inside as well there we go there we go and so that's what we're looking for um you know with a burger that has a firmer texture you know we're going to put that in a bun and when we chomp down into the bun it isn't going to go out the sides it's going to stay and it's going to it's going to have that resistance so that is what we're looking for okay so now on to our griddle pan so whenever we're griddling anything we always put the oil onto what we're griddling. We don't put it in the pan. And the reason why is that if we put oil here, then what's gonna happen is oil is just gonna sit at the bottom of these rivets and it's just gonna start smoking, okay? And we don't want that to happen. Um, so we just need to take a little bit of oil. And if I want to use this tiny bit of oil, um, I use the lid, I use the lid. So I just pour a little bit into the lid there there we go and let's find a nice one to put on so we'll do so we want we want a couple where the stripes are really going to show up so you can do this with a pastry brush if you want to there we go and we'll wait for this to get really hot so we want it on a high temperature So we put our hands there and we're waiting for it to feel like a hot summer's day. Okay, like a very hot summer's day, like a heat wave day. <laughs> Here we go. And so then we can just pop these down. Yeah, we want to hear that sizzle again. But whenever we're griddling things, it does help to press it down as well. And you'll find the same with veggies as well. So recently, uh, we've been making a lot of meals with yellow courgette um, that we've got from the allotment and from the back garden um, and they are lovely griddled, really, really lovely griddled. So you get slices of them and griddle them, um, but they do need a bit of holding down because, you know, they might be a little bit bumpy and not necessarily contacting with the griddle pan. Um, so we can just use our spatula just to hold it down. There we go. And by the way, apologies if the smoke alarm goes off, but this is live. So, you know, it's just, if that happens, it's proof that it's live. <laughs> but we do want to see this smoking because, you know, when we're using a griddle pan, uh, the whole point of it is that we're charring the, 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 the burgers or the vegetables or whatever it is, you know, so we do want it to start smoking. So at this point, you know, if you're a bit unsure as to like whether it is um, charred or griddled enough, then we can have a little peek, but just bring an edge up because what can happen is, you know, we can be a bit too um, impatient about it and we want to see, and then we flip it over and it's like, it isn't quite done. So we try and flip it back and then the lines don't match up. I am a little bit particular about these things, by the way. There we go, look at that. Okay, so. 
And that is what we are looking for. So, you know, I, I really do think that if you present burgers like this um, at the barbecue, you get a lot more people convinced to go vegan. Um, and they're just really, really satisfying and really, really easy. Really, really easy. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed um, this recipe and I hope that you try to make it as well. Because, you know, it isn't anything that's that complicated. Let me just shut this thing off. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Nice and quiet now. Um, so yeah, this, this recipe is really, really super easy. We try to make our recipes as easy and accessible as possible. Um, so do check out um, our recipes. And we are in the process of writing a cookbook. Um, and we're doing that in collaboration with Miracles Mission. Um, Miracles Mission is an animal charity who helps um, disabled and injured animals around the world. And they are currently um, fundraising to create a re rehabilitation centre in the UK. Um, so they'll be bringing dogs over from overseas who have disabilities um, and giving them wheels or prosthetics or whatever it is they need. And then you know, finding finding um, a family for them to live with. Um, so all of the proceeds are going to go to that that animal charity. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes out for that. Um, I think that we are going to be going to a Q and A soon. So please do like start thinking about questions that you possibly got for me. Um, preferably ask me things about vegan food because I don't really know about anything else. <laughs> so, um, but questions welcomed, whether it's about food or whether you're interested in uh, becoming a vegan chef. Because I know for a lot of you out there, you're really passionate about vegan food and you really, really love to cook, um, but you don't really know how to get started. Um, and you know, there's a lot of misinformation about how to become a chef or the types of jobs that are available to us now. Um, so, you know, feel free to ask me questions about that as well. Okay, I think that we're gonna go over to Q&A. <laughs> okay, so you've already answered this one. Um, how many Facebook live cooking sessions has the Vegan Chef School gone during the COVID-19? lockdown period and that's from Paul Campbell. Paul, <laughs> no to that one. <laughs> okay so the question was uh, how many how many shows have we done uh, since lockdown happened and I'm laughing about that because Paul has actually been keeping count for us uh, he's a person who asked a question he would know better than me. I think it's like 117, 118, 119 ballpark. <laughs> Uh, but we've been very fortunate enough to have um, guests on the show as well. So we had a live Q&A with Dr. Gemma Newman um, and we've also had some other fabulous chefs come on as well. So we've had the guys from Picky Wops um, do a pizza recipe course. Uh, Danielle uh, Mopatui, who is the vegan petition chef, she came on and did some amazing, amazing uh, vegan uh, pastry for us. Um, so yes, I think, I think 118. <laughs> Next question. We have a question from George. Can I use this to make meatballs for pasta dishes? As Absolutely. Well? Yes, you can definitely use this to make uh, to make meatballs for pasta dishes. Um, so this is a, a, you know a really flexible recipe. So you can make sausages with it, sausage rolls with it. You can make meatballs. You can make kofta. So if any of you guys are into Middle Eastern food out there, you make a great, 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 great kofta. Um, and you can even use it um, to make like a mince as well. Um, so there's lots of different options there. Next question, Joss asks, what's the difference between shallots and onions? Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys can hear, I'll just repeat that. Uh, Joss asked, uh, what's the difference between onions and shallots? Shallots are fancy <laughs> and more expensive, um, but they can be a bit sweeter. They can be a bit sweeter. Um, but I think that with um, using something like a shallot, you want to use it in a dish where it's really, it's really going to make a difference. So in a dish like this, probably not going to make a huge amount of difference. So why spend more money? Um, but I've made um, stuffed shallots before, and of course, the the flavour of the shallots like really comes out in that. If you're making a risotto, it'd be really lovely to make a risotto with shallots, and you would be able to taste the difference. Um, but if you want to make, you know, it's a special occasion, and you want to make like a fancy risotto, 
you know, then make it with make it with shallots, make it with some nice wine, and then you'll be able to really, really appreciate the difference. Because to my mind, if you're going to spend more on an ingredient, you really need to use it in a recipe uh, that lets that ingredient shine. Okay, next question. Kate asks, what's your favourite dish to cook and your favourite dish to eat? Okay, so Kate asks, what's my favourite dish to cook and my favourite dish to eat? So my favourite dish to cook, oh my gosh, this is like having to choose your favourite child. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Well, okay. I, I do like making something like a risotto or a stew because I find it incredibly meditative. Um, and I made epic pasta sauce the other day. So, you know, things where you can just like take your time and you can stand in the kitchen and you can let things cook out. And I find that really relaxing. Um, and really meditative. Um, now, what's my favourite dish to eat? Oh, oh, that's a tough one. I did go through a period where my favourite food was uh, peanut butter and beans on toast, uh, which is such a guilty pleasure, especially as I'm a chef. Um, but you know, that's something that I would have when I was like feeling a bit down or a bit unwell or you know that type of thing. Uh, what's my favourite to eat? I mean, we do we do in this house like love our chilies, our nachos in front of a Friday night movie. That's possibly preferably like a really rubbish movie <laughs> that we can laugh at. Uh, so yeah, I think probably like chili and nachos at the moment. Denise asks, what's the web address of your community hub? Ah, okay. So Denise asks, what's the web address of our community hub? So. On our Facebook page, uh, so on Facebook we have not only our Facebook page where you can see all our videos and stuff like that, we also have the Community Hub. So that is our group and the Community Hub is um, such a wonderful place to come to if you want to um, just connect with people who really love vegan food in a total like geek sense and over enthusiastic sense in the way that we do. Um, so I think it is uh facebook.com slash the vegan chess called community hub okay so the, yeah facebook.com the vegan chess school community hub there we go but it's just by searching the vegan chess school community hub you should be able to find it justine asks can you freeze these ah right okay so justine asks uh, if i could freeze them and yes Yes, absolutely you can. Um, and that's the thing that, that I love about this recipe is that you can make more than you need and then you can just whack the rest in the freezer. And when it comes time to cooking them again, then just pop your oven on to 200 degrees Celsius, which is 390 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and cook them for around like 20 minutes or something like that. So exactly the same amount of time uh, that it would take for you to bake one of the ready-made burgers. Denise asks, can I pre-order your book and where can I buy it? Ah, okay. So Denise asks uh, if she can pre-order the cookbook uh, and where she'll be able to buy it. So you will be able to buy it through the school site. You will also be able to buy it through Miracle's Mission um, as well. Um, and so we are doing things in a slightly different way. You know, we're not going to be selling it through Amazon. It will be um, through Miracle's Mission and the school because that means that we can get more profit um to the charity and therefore more profit you know to the animals um so you will be able to buy it from those those two places was there another question now was that do i answer that <laughs> that's great um the next one is from joss can you put cheese in these yes in <laughs> yes in them Yes, you can, you can. And on our website, we've actually got a recipe uh, with these burgers where you actually put cheese in between. So uh, when we got to the point of having our mixture in our bowl and we'd added uh, the ground flour and the porridge oats, you can make them into patties. So you make one patty, you put a round of cheese in it. So you have to cut the cheese to size, you know, so that it's going to fit into the burger. And then you put another patty on top of it and squish it all together and then you can cook it, cook it like that. And that's a really, really good option if you find that you're buying, you know like the squares of cheese, the slices of cheese? 
and it isn't melting. So there are some brands out there that don't melt underneath the grill or in the oven. But if you put them in something, if you kind of create like a pocket for them, then they will definitely melt in that. So they will melt in between these, these burgers if you make it in that way. But also making something like a cheese and onion pasty, you'll find that that cheese will also melt because it's surrounded and the heat will really get to it. It won't, it won't dry out. Um, so yeah, that's definitely an option. Back to the cookbook. Uh, Lynn asks, when do you expect it to be out? Ah, okay. So Lynn is asking when will cook be, book, the cookbook <laughs> be out. Uh, so we're aiming for November. Um, so then it will be in time for people to buy it as uh, Christmas presents. Uh, and of course it will be in time for the January too. Um, but we're putting a few Christmas recipes in there because we know that um, Christmas time uh, it's not just vegans who are looking for Christmas recipes, it's also non-vegans because there are non-vegans out there who will be like, vegans coming for Christmas, what do I cook them? So, you know, it will help them as well. But the, the premise of the book is that it is accessible. So it isn't just for people who are vegans and we will have 20 stories of the dogs that Miracle's Mission has helped and we'll also have the most beautiful um, illustrations uh, by a very talented uh, lady called Bridget of the dogs as well. So they are really, really beautiful. So, you know, and she has these stories of the dogs and the work that Miracles Mission does because I really think that it can help people see that taking a dog on who has a disability, um, it isn't as hard as you think it's going to be. They're not sad at all. They don't recognise that they're disabled in any way. Um, and so we can really help uh, people to see that it's nothing to be scared of and we can get these dogs like more more homes. Next question. Clean asks, where is the rainbow? <gasps> oh, okay. So someone's asking where is the rainbow and uh, the reason why is because on our show, every uh, live show, we have a rainbow hidden somewhere and it's usually with uh, something underneath the rainbow. So I'll show you the one that we had from our show um yesterday which is our cooking monster because we were making cookies um how many cookies do we have left jeff not, not, <laughs> not very many no not very many not very many so we made very very epic uh cookies yesterday so we had cookie monster and the rainbow but we don't have a rainbow today because we're on someone else's show <laughs> so sorry to disappoint uh, yeah, Joss again. Joss asks, how much will the book be, and will recipes from student chefs be in the book? Um, okay, so Joss was asking how much the cookbook is going to be. I think maybe twenty pounds. I don't know if you guys like think that that's like a good amount. It's always great to get uh, feedback uh, from, from anybody who's watching and from uh, people on our community hub as well, because you can tell us. You can tell us. Uh, but unfortunately. Printing a full colour cookbook is possibly the most expensive printing ever. Uh, so we have to like, you know, sell it for a decent amount. So we get the pups uh, a decent amount of money. And indeed, we will be including uh, recipes from our students and also pictures of um, our students at the school. Um, so yes, yeah, definitely. Because our students have so much talent, absolutely like so much talent. It's absolutely amazing uh, how creative they are and the recipes that they come up with. Um, so yes, we will. Um, and at the moment, our pro chef students are doing a, a recipe development project and their recipes are all Christmas recipes uh, and they're uh, going to be going to the Vegan Society who will be uh, pushing them towards mainstream media. So you might see one of our students in like the Daily Mirror or the Guardian or, you know, those magazines that I don't read, whatever. <laughs> We're going to be getting them into mainstream media and also they'll be going to Veganuary and also Veg News as well. Um, so yes, we, we do make the most of our student talents. Next question. Last one. This is from Denise. Um, it's not a question. It's just saying your vibrant and award-winning personality really shine through. Oh, I do have another question. <laughs> Today, just... Thank you very much for the compliment. Thank right, you very um, much. Lynn has written to say, um, any success stories you can share regarding your former and current students? 
Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Well, I have I had one very 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 talented um, student join me for the first course called Barney, um, and uh, I mean he was so incredibly creative. He came from a design background, and you could really see that in in his cooking. Um, and he, but he had to work on like the, the taste side of things. Um, and so when he was with me, he really, really worked on that. He was so diligent, like taking notes all the time, um, taking the most amazing photographs. Um, and uh, he became chef after that, uh, immediately after that. Um, and now he's becoming a private chef. Um, so just through uh, him sharing recipes um, and doing lives as well on Instagram, it's mainly on Instagram, it's called Barney Pow by the way, that's not P-O-W, it's P-A-U, so Barney P-A-U um, on Instagram. And just through doing that, someone con uh, connected with him and said, I love what you do, I want you to be my private chef, which is absolutely amazing because he has, it's just perfect for him. It's really, really perfect for him. So yeah, I'm super, super, super proud of him. I mean, we've had like so many other students who have gone from the course um, straight into straight into working in kitchens. We had one student start working at Gautier. So if any of you guys know um, know Soho, you'll know that Gautier is mission style restaurant. It isn't 100% vegan, but they have um, quite a lot of vegan food, and they were quite happy for him just to deal with the vegan food, which is like it does amazing, really, really amazing opportunities uh, for our students. Um, so yeah, they are doing really, really wonderful things. Um, and of course we have Katie who works with us and so she is one of our presenters um, so she is with us every um, Friday every Friday hosting recipes um, and so uh, <clears throat> I saw her talent and I made sure that after after she'd finished with us nobody else could get her like I wanted her to work with us because uh, she's a great presenter as well really really great presenter yeah I'm proud of all of them Denise asks who are your sponsors? Who are our sponsors? We don't have any sponsors actually. We don't have any sponsors. In fact, you know, I have um, been approached by, by companies that I really, really love to work for, uh, work with, uh, work with their products, you know, and they've said, you know, we'll give you product for free. Um, but I've actually declined it because I don't want to have to do that thing on Instagram where we say, you know, uh, this product is great. Oh, by the way, we've been sponsored by da 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 da. Like, I think one of the crucial things that we do is showing people what good products are out there from a very, very honest point of view. So I want you guys to be able to see that, okay, yeah, I do, I do bang on about Hobner Dogs a lot, but that's because I genuinely, I genuinely believe in what they do and their products. It isn't because they're sponsoring us. So we don't have any sponsors. Any more questions? That's the last question. Okay, okay, so therefore we can wrap it up. I think that we're going to be going back to Tim now, if he's here. Tim is indeed here today. I've been sitting oh. listening and watching. I've been making <laughs> your recipe. I think it's great. And, uh, and it's been great that you've had some questions and um, it's just brilliant. You've been able to share your clear, absolutely passion and desire to, um, you know, enhance everybody around you's cooking skills and knowledge. And I think it's just great that you've been able to, you know, help some of the burgeoning, um, growing London, you know, restaurant scene and, and some of the, the caterers who are coming through uh, to, to be able to get some really good uh, vegan options. Because I think for those of us who go back a few decades, I mean, we remember Cranks, in yeah. Soho and such like, and um, Neil's Yard, um, very early days for sort of vegan and vegetarian options. Um, actually, they were pretty good in those days, to be honest. I mean, Cranks was always brilliant, you know. I, I, yeah. I loved it, you know. I was about there a few times in the 80s, so it was just a brilliant. Um, but it's great, it's just great. And I think it's just fantastic to be able to share this knowledge and encourage people it's pretty easy a lot of this stuff pretty simple ingredients there's not a lot of mystery to you know a whole food rainbow plant-based diet um it just takes a bit of um i think a bit of it it's just confidence actually i think you know what yeah yeah so watching a demo like this and listening to you and showing people how to do it, it's just a great way for people to learn i know there's some other fantastic demos 
um, on the website, you know, at the event. Uh, there's a whole load of cookery demos, including, you know, one from Nishma, from Shambu. So she was on our program earlier this morning on the VegFest DK, chat, chatting away about that. And uh, Dahl, she's got a Dahl recipe, which is my favourite. So I should be having a little look at that one myself. Um, but that's it. That's brilliant. That's been a really interesting hour. Uh, thank you very much indeed. If you've enjoyed this, you can see this again on a recording. As from tomorrow, it will be available for 30 days. And do go and have a little look at our exhibitors. If you've been watching, our exhibitors are all in the exhibition hall at the online Summerfest. And do go and visit some of Day's um, websites and you know, resources that's been mentioned. And um, Day, do you just want to end up with just a reminder where to find you again? Yeah, sure. So um, if you just search for the Vegan Chess School, uh, you'll be able to find us. Our website is theveganchessschool.com. So, you know, fairly easy uh, on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. We're just the Vegan Chess School. Um, so, yeah, pretty easy to find us. The Vegan Chess School. That's it. Yeah. That's pretty easy. Day Radley, thank you very much indeed. That's thank, you. thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.